to share it with us? Yes, sir. My name is Kyle Castler. And I was wondering, the charge of domestic violence without violence, I was wondering how I could get rid of the permanent injunction with no evidence for a crime. Let me ask you a few questions back to the question, sir. Okay. How long have you been keeping the injunction under against you? It's a lifetime. It's a lifetime. And how long ago? 2003. Okay. And who was the person who received the injunction? Well, I'm not allowed to say her name legally, sir. Well, like, what relation to her is she in? Ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. Does she live locally? Yes, she's rode by my house a couple of times. She doesn't seem to be bothered with it. Okay, that's that's kind of important. Well, we don't go into all the details, but it, it, there are reasons for this. I mean, if she's moved to New York City and you live down here, obviously it makes it a little bit easier. But Mark, give him a general overview as to what it takes to even have a shot at getting a permanent injunction dismissed. Well, in a situation where nothing has happened over what you're telling me an eight-year period, I think you'd have a pretty good shot. You have to do what's called a motion to dissolve the injunction. And, um, you know, I don't know what the facts were, how egregious the facts were that she alleged and that the judge apparently believed when granting the injunction. But ultimately, your big uh, case in argument would be, hey, listen, uh, nothing happened over this period of crime. I had no contact with her. In fact, I have witnesses, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, and I've seen you live with people that say she was kind of tied to my house and knows this is my house, and, um, you know, there have been no issues there, and I, you know, want to be able to be follow this career path or, or, or get this particular um, scholarship or go to this school or whatever. And uh, I want to be able to get this thing dissolved because it's hindering my life and, and nothing's happened since then. So ultimately, you get out of the courthouse and say, hey, or go to a lawyer, 393-9010, and uh, ask to file a, a motion to dissolve the injunction. Let me answer your question, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to say that my main concern with the injunction is not that she and I will have contact, but that I will not be able to defend myself with the failing economy and so forth. I'm not sure what you mean, defend yourself. Uh, the rising crime rate, well, I'm not allowed to have a firearm as a result of it. Well, yeah, and, that's, and, and the way to get to that point to where you can get a firearm is going to do the emotion to dissolve. In fact, you know, give, give uh, my office a call at 393-9010, and uh, we'll talk about it just a bit more specific. But ultimately, it's a motion to dissolve, and, and you want to go along that line of thinking and that line within your uh, petition to have it dissolved, uh, and that line of thought and articulating that to the judge. And, and, you know, he points out an interesting question. A lot of people do not realize this March is right now. Injunction series with the, uh, some consequences regarding your ability to possess or own firearms. So if you've got an injunction that your fellow may be a hunter, for instance, and uh, if he's out hunting, you know, he can't get a public, he can get a hunting, I don't know if that's he can get a hunting license. Um, you may be able to get one. If you, 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 you wouldn't be allowed to hunt with any other animal than a bow and arrow or your bare hands because if you possess a firearm, even a hunting rifle, I'll be for injunction against you. Uh, that's a criminal action. And I know it's a federal offense, and I believe it's a state offense as well. Uh, so there are many violations of this, and so that's a violation of the injunction. So it took me. I mean, I might leave out the part about you know, if I was going to turn the judge that. that the criminal argument getting is upon us. Yeah, yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you'd like to be able to have your, uh, your weapons back here, whatever, like your wife's back there, fire. Yeah, just kind of tone it down, like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, we're kind of flashing the uh, uh, the end of days. Uh, you might want to say that, you know, I'd like to be able to defend myself against some intruder or something like that. I feel like I've left my, you know, my, my family vulnerable and I can go to the precinct. Things like that. So, yeah. so unless you call and you, and you give uh, Mark a call. If Mark doesn't charge anything for an emergency consultation, he'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll give a little more background from you uh, during that phone call. And uh, I think you probably seen a pretty good chance. Sure. Okay. All, All right. The next thing we want to talk about Mark is stalking. You'd ask me, do I am I seeing more of these stalking cases? Yes and no. Um, when these stalking statutes first came out, uh, which would have been, gosh, you know, seven or eight years ago back, I think, in 2004 is when they first started coming out. And I understand why it was. I mean, you would have people that would, uh, this is really before texting and things like that, uh, you would have people driving by your house constantly and calling you constantly and leaving notes on your door and notes on your window. It really wasn't a criminal offense. I remember the first thing, I was a kid, and there was an actress that was on this uh, TV show. I've seen her getting killed. A yeah. lady from Mork and Mindy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. She, wasn't, she was the older sister, but... Young girl, you know, she was... Pam Dauber from, was from work and Pam Dauber was the older sister, and the younger sister in that show, she got killed by her boyfriend. Right. He was stalking her, and that's what started this whole dialogue. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a weird, creepy okay. feeling to go through when somebody is mm -hmm. doing that to you. I, I know, you know, I, I haven't had that happen. Talks? I had some gal one time that, that 
not quite stalking, but she called me and made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, and like two or three times, and then I told her, don't call me anymore. Did she? Uh, did she? Well, it turns out she was a bill collector. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I have never been stalked. But I mean, I know people that have been stalked, and it is it is really, really weird. It makes you feel uncomfortable. And I think the legislature needed to to act when they passed a statute back in 2004, or thereabouts. Uh, but when I guess was in a long drawn about way of answering your question, when the statute was first passed. Everything was stalking. Everybody went to prosecute mm. stalking. Ah, he's stalking me. He co my boy, ex boyfriend called me twice today. Uh, he's stalking. Well, you know, it, 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 until any law that comes out, it's like anything else, like a new pair of shoes. You know, you got to break it in. You got to wear them out a little bit and figure out how what works and what doesn't. Uh, and the stalking charge took a few years before you know people kind of finally case came law out. Has to, case law has to kind of deal with it, and they got to massage it and look at different facts because there's always a different fact pattern that's going to. That's why we're in business. Well, yeah. yeah, and I had a guy that was charged with stalking recently, and it was a ridiculous stalking charge. He was alleged to have made sent two text messages and one phone call within a span of about two hours, and it turns out that he was responding to her phone call. Oh. Uh, and he didn't get arrested, thankfully. It was just a summons, but this poor fellow with no prior record was issued a summons to appear uh, and based upon an officer's belief that that constituted probable cause. I think the officer did, was not aware that she had initiated the original call, and uh, that would have been a good question to ask, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But but you know, you know whatever. These right. guys, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I don't blame the police officers. They've got a lot of work to do. And listen, Mark, it's hard for me as an attorney to stay up with all these laws. I mean, it, it is genuinely difficult for me. I mean, it, sometimes people will call me. I'm up just and, saying, hey, uh, did you call him? Before? Well, I I, 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 I see where you're coming from. But people will call me up and they'll ask me some arcane. Uh, legal question based upon some, you know, statute based upon common law right, from right, Magna right. Carta. And I said, well, you know, I really need to look that up. And, and they'll be offended, like, well, you're a lawyer. You're supposed to know right. all that. Well, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of statutes, and they're amended, you know, a couple times a year. Uh, some of them are. Uh, and so it takes, a, you know, we can't possibly have all these memorized. And the guy that's out there in the field trying to make a, uh, the best uh, decisions he or she can. I, I understand how mistakes are made on occasion, and that's what the criminal justice system is for, is try to sort of clean these matters up. But stalking, quite honestly, all it is, is a, a person who engages uh, in a course of conduct with the intent to harass. Uh, harassing means to engage, uh, 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 let me re read you the definition, harass means to engage in a course of conduct directed at a specific person that causes substantial emotional distress in such person and serves no legitimate purpose. Okay, the no legitimate purpose is uh, a big thing there. If, if I uh, text my ex-wife and say, where are my doggone kids? I want to see my kids. If I text her ten times, you know, that's not stalking. It's, it's a legitimate purpose for me to be able to mm -hmm. see my kids. A course of conduct means a pattern of conduct composed of a, of a series of events over a period of time, however short, uh, evidencing a continuity of purpose. Okay? So you, you're getting back to that three or four phone calls within a brief period of time uh, can be uh, can be stalking. If I call if, if you know I call up some woman if some woman gives me her number in a bar I'm married that would never happen but assuming that I was not married and some woman gives me her number in the bar and we go out on a date and she says you're a creep I don't want anything to do with you and I call her three or four times uh, the next day just to be nasty to her just to be nasty to her after she's made it clear that she does not want to have anything to do with me that very well could be stalking. Even though it's a limited number of phone calls in a limited period of duration, they have no legitimate purpose, and they were they were made with the intent to harass. That could be stalking. Now, what about Officer Dreamboat here with uh, with what it is that he was he was uh, this 27 phone calls? I mean, let's do a little analysis. Well, his, his legitimate purpose is he wants to continue to carry on a relationship with her. Well, I think if this woman had made it clear that she was not interested in continuing that relationship, uh, his desire to continue uh, that relationship one could have a hard time concluding that that is a uh, legitimate. legitimate purpose. Uh, you know, I don't know what, over the period of time, you know, they got this thing. Well, what about sending, saying he's going to send nudie pics? Did he you know, say that? Bad pictures of her, I guess, that may be uh, well, that's a threat. suggestive. Yeah. As well as, as well as um, uh, playing, I guess, over for a minute on her answering machine, a, uh, I, I think, 60 seconds of, of a sound that he may have recorded from the two of them being together. Lovely. This guy's a dreamboat. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure that uh, that was wise. Uh, <laughs> and that certainly seems to meet the four corners of the statute, how that will turn out. You know, but let me, you know Mark, we have had some fun at the uh, expense of police officers because uh, several of them have acted uh, 
inappropriately and brought I'm just saying, disgrace on a fine agency by LPD. But for the most part, you know, people can make mistakes. I would like to. Well, he made mistakes 27 times and then made the choice to go ahead and uh, and uh, play that that on the. On the I find that more troublesome than calling the 27 times or texting because, golly, my daughter's 14 years old. She'll send 10 text messages in, in two minutes. It's remarkable. So, uh, you know, I, the, the, the number of texts or, or phone calls to me is not as troublesome as, as the other stuff, you know, the leaving the, the, the voicemail and threatening to send new pictures. To me, that is somebody that has gone, you know, a little bit over the edge. Folks, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Back to the last 10 minutes of Law Talk, sponsored by the Kayla Law Group and... McMahon, PA. My name is David Kaler. I'm a criminal defense attorney and a personal injury attorney, born and raised here in Imperial Polk County. Uh, Mark was born somewhere uh, at Broward. Is that where it was? Broward County. It was Coconut Coconut Creek, Fort Lauderdale uh, uh, General Hospital, Broward General Hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, That's where it was happening back then. Yeah, I reckon so. So when you were born, did you come out with like your your, your gold your, chain? Your gold chain. I had a little shirt on that was. <laughs> Unbuttoned down on the navel. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, folks, uh, uh, I'm a Polk County boy born and bred, and we're going to make Mark uh, uh, an honorary one. He's been here long enough. Thank you. Uh, he's a good man, a uh, good attorney. So if you're looking for a criminal defense attorney, give us a call at 668-7223, and Mark can be found at 393-9010. Yes, you got it. I finally got Genius. it. Uh, I don't know if that number actually works. I've never called it. I sort of ah. leaned out the door and said, hey, Mark. Uh, Mark, we've got some great guests we hope might be coming up in the near future. I went to this uh gang awareness summit over in winter haven last tuesday uh, i live in winter haven uh my daughter attends uh, public school in winter haven uh, it's my hope that my boys will be going to uh brigham academy uh, if not they'll i guess be going to pine is it pine view pine Tri i don't know what it is pinewood uh, elementary and so you know i'm clearly concerned about the uh proliferation of gangs in polk county we went there it was uh, it was a great uh, great thing. Uh, it was put on by the NAACP, the Sheriff's Office, the State Attorney's Office, and the Winter Haven Police Department. Uh, I haven't spoken with uh, Chief Hester in quite some time. Uh, I got to see him briefly when they were put up uh, the statute called the Protector, uh, which was a bronze statue. Statue, not statute, but a statue that was uh, in front of the Winter Haven Police Department's uh, new building, which, by the way, the Kayla Law Group was uh, one of the, the donors uh, sure. to have that statue uh, built. Uh, anyway, and uh, I was excited to see him get hired a few years ago. I think he's going to do a terrific job, and you could see a little bit of that last Tuesday night. This guy is uh, engaged, he's energetic, uh, and I think he's going to provide some terrific leadership to the citizens of Winter Haven, and I think he's going to come on Law Talk. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're hopeful to have him. Uh, and I ran into uh, Scott Wilder, who was uh, sort of the uh, public relations communications guy with uh, the sheriff's office, uh, and uh, he suggested that... Uh, you know, we give the sheriff, uh, you know, three or four weeks notice and, and the sheriff might be able to come on and join us. That would be, uh, that would be great. Uh, and there's some other folks that we're going to have come on. Uh, Todd Dancer, I keep forgetting to give Todd a call. I need to give him a call. He'll come on. Uh, and, uh, we've got some great shows coming up in the weeks to come. And if you have any suggestions regarding anybody that you That would political like, guy. Who? Oh, God, I always, I keep forgetting about him. I'm so sorry. He's probably on vacation. Uh, I really need to call, uh, Dr. Anderson. Man, he was so fun. I need to have him come on again. You know, I just get sidetracked. Nick, we'll do the show on Monday. Next thing you know, it's Thursday or Friday. Yeah, yeah. And Monday morning rolls around, and here you and I are, you know, at 4.30 going, what are we going to talk about tonight? <laughs> uh, but usually we can come up with something today being a perfect example of that. But we do have some good shows in the future. If you have any questions, folks, we, we cover uh, a lot of topics here. Uh, but I want you to know that when I say it's a free consultation, I mean that. You can call Mark up. I mean, you can't come into the office and, and uh, you know, bring, it, bring, yeah, bring a slip in a bag or like that. But, but certainly come in. If it's an area uh, of law that we practice, we'll be happy to give you 10 or 15 minutes and sometimes a little bit more uh, if we can to help you uh, figure out your problem. If not, then if we can't help you figure out there on the spot, you may need to hire an attorney. We hope you might consider us. And if it's an area of the law that we don't practice, uh, We'll get calls on real estate and tax and probate. We don't practice those types of law, but we know very good attorneys that do, and we are always happy to send you to a good attorney. There are some terrific attorneys that advertise in the phone book. Mark and I both advertise in the phone book, but generally speaking, that's not the best way to pick a name uh, for somebody that's going to be helping you work your way through a thorny issue. Right. Uh, and, you know, sometimes that's the only way you can do it. Uh, usually the people that get to us will... Uh, sometimes find us uh, Google. Google. That, well, the, we get, the internet's getting to be very popular. KaylaLaw.com. Don't forget that. KaylaLaw.com. But they'll find us in the phone book. They'll give us a call. They'll talk to us. They'll 
conclude that, uh, or, you know, I know this happens a lot with you, that you clearly know what you're talking about. And then they'll ask around a while they've already, after they've already spoken with you a right. little bit and uh, be reassured that the people that they're going to see, either one of the Kalers or McMahon, is going to do a good job for them. So, once again, if you have yourself uh, any type of legal issues, give us a call uh, at 668-7223. That's Kaler Law Group uh, or McMahon, PA, at 393-9010. That's 393-9010. Mark, I do want to say this. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been saying it for years uh, because this, this controversy regarding this particular lieutenant, former lieutenant LPD, seemed to have gone on for years. I, I do not want to disparage the Lakeland Police Department. I have known officers of the Lakeland Police Department since I began work at the State Attorney's Office in 1993. And we've had them on here. The great, we've had yeah. a number of uh, good police officers. I don't, you know, I'm almost at the point now where I don't want to name them because as soon as I do, I find out that some of these goons uh, give them a hard time for being friends with uh, with you and me. Right. Uh, but uh, these guys are dedicated to law enforcement. They're 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 terrific police officers. Lakeland Police Department is a wonderful agency. This is a beautiful city that we live in or work in, and uh, uh, Lakeland Police Department deserves our support. I think uh, they've got some great leadership. Uh, Chief Womack is going to do a now, fine job. Yeah, caveat yeah. that. Well, you know, it, and it's not like Chief Boatner was a bad guy. Everybody that talked to him said he was a man of integrity, that he was a good heart, you know, he's a good man. Uh, but, you know, towards the end of his career, I, I think he just got a little disengaged. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, He was working out all the time. Well, I don't know what was going on, but, but you know, he clearly was disengaged. He clearly was not aware of what was going on. But I'm not suggesting that Chief Boatner was a bad person, but the last, you know, year or two of his administration, uh, he kind of let things slide a little I bit. I have, and I want to do the, you know, if I had the time to, to, to do the numbers on this, his leadership created a situation where you've had so many officers that have been charged with things, which is an anomaly overall, but still, if you were to compare that with the number of officers to the people that get charged in the general population, I think you got a higher percentage. No, I don't believe that. I believe that you would. I'm going to do the research. <laughs> well, you should do the research. Yeah. I'm not sure how you would figure that out. But uh, but that's a leadership problem. And I think that, I mean, in fact, you saw Womack speak at, uh, at something of, what, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Rotary, Rotary, you said yeah. she was fantastic, yeah, right? she was. I mean, she was no nonsense. Uh, and it, there's no way that this, this sort of baloney would fly at the sheriff's office or Winter Haven Police Department or Lake Wales Police Department. I mean, she, I've known Chris Velasquez since I was a young prosecutor, and he's going to do an amazing job out there at Lake Wales Police Department. Or uh, I think Sloan is out in the Haines City Police Department, as I recall. Uh, I don't get out to Haines City very much. But, you know, these, we've got some good leaders running these agencies now. And uh, you know, law enforcement deserves our support. But at the same time, we give them the most important commodity that we give them is our trust. And, uh, you know, when they act in a certain way, uh, they abuse that, uh, that privilege. And so, uh, but I, I'm confident that uh, the best days for Polk County law enforcement are ahead. Oh, absolutely. All right, Mark, do you have any parting thoughts you'd like to share with our listening audience? No, I mean, if, if anybody out there has any issues when it comes to uh, needing to get some sort of protection, maybe you're on the receiving end of, of uh, some stalking, maybe you're on the receiving end of some domestic violence, both Dave and I do handle injunctions. We handle injunctions when it comes to petitioning, uh, helping with the petitioner. Uh, to see the respondent, that. we handle this. And the respondent as well. So, you know, give me a call at 393-9010. In fact, this lady in the Skinner situation, give me a call at 393-9010. I'll be happy to take it. Yeah, you probably do that one pro bono. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you so very much for tuning in. This is David Kale on behalf of Mark McMahon, wishing you a great week. Thank you. <laughs> It's a new reason to stay up all night long. Coast to coast on Talk 1430. With yesterday's topic, I don't know. It is something that you won't talk about.